Welcome back to part 2 of The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. In this video, you will learn how to understand human behavior so you can become 1% better. Let's jump right on in to Law 10, Envy. You may deny it, but you compare yourself to others. It leads to low self-worth, frustration, and hostility. A sudden change in status can trigger envy in your friends and peers, especially among those in your own profession. The biggest sign of envy manifests in the eyes. Philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer devised an experiment where he would say something good about himself and observe the onlooker's expression of disappointment. On the flip, he would share a misfortune and it would elicit joy in the onlooker. This is a common phenomenon known as schadenfreude. Envy also manifests as offhand comments, gossip, and flattery followed by negative criticism. So here are five strategies to transmute envy. Number one is to understand that someone might look good on the surface, but in reality, they face other troubles, and so your envy loses its power. Number two, compare yourself to those in dire situations to increase gratitude for where you're at right now. Number three, practice Mitfreude, a term coined by Nietzsche, which means joying with. Actively try to fill the joy of others. Number four, Turn envy into a source of inspiration to reach or exceed their level. And lastly, number five, admire somebody else's achievements in light of human greatness, because admiration is the opposite of envy. Law 11, grandiosity. We have a deep need to think highly of ourselves. It's this facet of human nature that is largely responsible for the business idea you think is awesome, but actually sucks. We look up to charismatic leaders because of their grandiose energy, whether it's rational or not. So here are five strategies to deal with grandiosity. Number one, understand that it's normal to want to feel superior. Concentrate the energy into one endeavor. Actively seek feedback and criticism. Seek out challenges above your skill level. And occasionally allow yourself to entertain crazy ideas or projects in order to stay sane. Law 12, gender rigidity. It is in your nature to want to move closer to what is feminine or masculine, which manifests as attraction to another person. The shaman is considered the wisest person in primitive cultures. The male shaman had an inner wife he listened to for guidance, and the female shaman had an inner husband. Green says that in the myths of many ancient cultures, Persian, Hebrew, Greek, Egyptian, original humans were believed to be both male and female, this made them so powerful that the gods feared them and split them in half. The problem in the modern world is over-identification with masculinity or femininity. Your masculine and feminine qualities are based on genetics and the influence of your parents of the opposite sex. Studies have shown that at an early age, boys are more emotionally reactive than girls. They are highly empathetic and sensitive. As they age, they learn to repress their emotions. Girls have an adventurous spirit that is natural to them. They have powerful wills which they like to exert in transforming their environment, but they learn to sacrifice their assertive side and to put other feelings before their own. Can you think of an area in your life where you are expected to take on a certain role and constantly live up to somebody else's expectations? Law 13. Aimlessness. Feeling lost in life isn't your fault. It's a natural response to growing up in modern society and culture. Support systems of the past like religion and universal causes to believe in have mostly vanished, at least in the Western world. It's no wonder you experience depression and lose yourself in addictions. Having a strong sense of purpose acts as a force multiplier in all areas of your life. Your decisions and actions will have power behind them. You'll be seen as the guy or girl that has their shit together. But beware of false purposes. The pursuit of pleasure is not a genuine or sustainable purpose, nor are some causes, cults, money, success, attention, or pessimistic nihilism. Here's five strategies for developing a sense of genuine purpose. Number one is to discover your calling in life. It may come to others easily, but for most people, it requires deep introspection and effort. Examine what you did when you were younger, and be vigilant of the activities where you enter a state of flow. Number two, use resistance and negative spurs. In any skill or project you pursue, 
you'll receive outside criticism or the work will become frustrating. Green says that frustration is a sign that you are making progress as your mind becomes aware of higher levels of skill that you have yet to attain. When things get tedious, set a deadline for yourself to force yourself to new heights. Number three, associate with others who have purposeful energy and avoid your loser friends who have a low sense of purpose. Break down your long-term goals into short-term goals to avoid overwhelm. And lastly, eliminate distractions and lose yourself in the work. Law 14, conformity. A side of your character is dictated by your interactions with groups of people. There's an impulsion in you to conform to behave how others behave and how they expect you to behave. Just look at the George Floyd protests. Notice how normal people stole from stores who wouldn't normally steal. Green says the only solution is to develop self-awareness and a superior understanding of the changes that occur to us in groups. Whether it's in life or business, Green suggests you form a reality group, which is a group with a healthy dynamic that's grounded in reality. It exists in order to get things done, to make things, to solve problems. Everybody knows exactly what their role is and what the goals of the group are. Here are five strategies to conduct a reality group. Number one, instill a collective sense of purpose. Make sure it's clear and that everybody puts it into practice. Number two, assemble the right team of lie tenants. Every group with big goals will need others to manage the execution of ideas. Choose the best person for the role based on their character and competence. Number three, let information and ideas flow freely. Infect the group with productive emotions and forge a battle-tested group. In the day-to-day, -day, your group can seem like they have it all together, but throw them into a stressful situation and their inner toughness will be revealed. For a group to move mountains, group members require inner toughness. Law 15, fickleness. People are ready to turn on their leader the moment they seem weak or experience a setback. It may not seem obvious on the surface, but humans respond with hidden contempt and doubt. The solution as a leader is to develop greater authority. Here are six strategies to develop greater authority. The first is to find your authority archetype. It's based on your character and natural strengths. Pause this video to identify your archetype and let me know in the comments below which one you are. Number two, focus on getting others' results. See the long-term vision amongst the short-term chaos. Lead by example. Stir conflicting emotions by occasionally being absent. And never appear to take, always give. Your authority erodes if you promise to give, but fail to deliver multiple times. Law 16, aggression. People appear polite and civilized on the surface but beneath they are dealing with frustrations. It can turn into manipulative and aggressive behavior to gain power over circumstances. The root of aggression is thought to stem from genetics and the attachment formed between a child and their mother. Psychoanalyst Melanie Klein, who specialized in the study of infants, noticed some babies were more anxious and greedier than others. And according to the psychoanalyst and writer Eric Fromm, if parents are too domineering, they repress their children's need for power and independence. These children are often the types who later like to dominate and tyrannize others. Green shares four strategies in the book. I won't elaborate because they can be described in one sentence. Channel your aggression into positive energy towards your goals. Law 17, generational myopia. The generation you are born into shapes the way you behave more than you realize. Each new generation wants to set a new standard for the world and separate themselves from others. With an understanding of this law, you can make better sense of the underlying changes going on in all areas of society and begin to anticipate where the world is headed, to predict future trends, and to understand the role we can play in shaping events. Green shares strategies to use this law to your advantage, but I believe you will derive more understanding by first reading The Lessons of History by Will Durant. The last law is death denial. You are going to die. How does that make you feel? If you're like most people, you feel anxious. So you distract yourself. 
but you can never achieve long-lasting peace without acceptance of death. In his book, The Wisdom of Insecurity, Alan Watts says, suppressing the fear of death makes it all the stronger. The point is only to know beyond any shadow of doubt that I and all other things now present will vanish until this knowledge compels you to release them, to know it now as surely as if you had just fallen off the rim of the Grand Canyon. Indeed, you were kicked off the edge of a precipice when you were born, and it's no help to cling to the rocks falling with you. If you are afraid of death, be afraid. The point is to get with it, to let it take over. Fear, ghosts, pains, transience, dissolution, and all. And then comes the hitherto unbelievable surprise, you don't die because you were never born. You had just forgotten who you are. There's nothing more powerful than changing your relationship with death than facing the immediate possibility of death. Existential psychotherapist Irvin Yalom documented the reactions to the impending doom of terminally ill cancer patients. They experienced a rearrangement of life priorities, a sense of liberation, deeper communication with loved ones, less fears, less concerns about rejection, and a greater willingness to take risks. Green shares strategies for dealing with death similar to that of Alan Watts, but I'm disappointed to see no mention of something, and mentioning that something will probably get us demonetized. But I'm going to share it with you anyway, because I believe in truth. That something is... Let's recap. In today's video, you learned the law of envy, grandiosity, gender rigidity, aimlessness, conformity, fickleness, aggression, generational myopia, and death denial. Drop a comment below and tell me which law you think is the most important. Let's keep becoming 1% better together. I'm Brandon, and I'll see you in the next video.